Hello everyone, welcome to a new LACQUA tutorial. Today we'll take a look at how to change the old Nano V2 with the new VX1. First, let's just take a look at the tool we will require for this operation. First, a good old Phillips number two screwdriver, a precision knife, uh, Allen key uh, 2.5 millimeters, and a USB cable that's required that. Also, we'll need a computer. First step is to remove the, the enclosure of the board. The tricks for doing this, with either a heat gun or you could always use an um, air dryer at uh, the IS setting. What you need to do is you need to apply pressure to the screw and with a little bit of heat, you turn around and once the, the screw start to turn, just remove the heat and you should be good to remove safely the screw. Like so. And you have to repeat this for all the 20 screw around the board. Now that you have removed all the screws on the enclosure, next step is to Put the enclosure at 90 degrees, turn it backward, and just drop it on his back. That way you have access to all the electronic inside the enclosure. Then you need to use the precision knife and go around the receiver here. And just slowly cut, it, cut the glue and the tape that on the back and enable to remove it like this. Then you just disconnect it and you have removed the old receiver. Now to plug the new one. As you can see there's a few, uh, there's a few uh, inscription here. You have S, 5 volt and minus. The S is the white or yellow cable. 5 volt is the red one and minus is the black one. So we have to put the receiver to make sure that the yellow or white cable is outside and this is how we plug this one now we need to install this cable that goes behind the f between the fog box and the sentinel to do it it's pretty much straightforward we just unplug the fog box from the sentinel and we plug this one between so we're plugging this one uh, we just need we need to go in between the you is the Bluetooth. Just try to find a pad that will go with your board. This one look a bit different inside because this is one of the first board we have ever built. So the layout is a bit different, but it should be pretty much similar to yours. And then we have this little blue cable. The blue cable is going on a V on the little receiver here. And it's gonna show, it's gonna be the cable that's gonna show the voltage of the battery. And now everything should be snug and tight. What we want to do next is making sure that the receiver is connecting to the new remote and show the percentage of the battery. So we're just gonna open the enclosure and then we have to power up the remote, just pressing it two or three seconds. It's gonna vibrate and open up. And as you can see, the three lights are rising up, which means that it's seeing the voltage of the battery. Uh, the other thing you could check, usually all the remotes are set up for these boards, but if you're not sure, just press two or three seconds on the little button on the left. And if it shows three lights flashing, this is good. This means that it's programmed for 10S battery, which is the same type of battery that we use in the prototype pole. So just press it again two or three seconds. It's going to go back to the original menu. So now we know that we are connect and we can see the battery. Now the next step is to calibrate the remote for the fog box. So this is good. And if we close the board, we should see these lights disappear because the board is not open and it don't see the voltage right now. So this is good for this step. Now we need to program the remote with the computer. For this, for, for this we need a USB cable. 
You could always use the cable from the remote, but I'm not sure if they are data compatible. So if you have if you have a data a USB cable that you're sure that is can transmit data, use this one. So we have to plug the USB inside the PC. And I do recommend to have the board off when you plug the USB. So here we are, you're plugged in. Now we are ready to program using the computer. Okay, so now we are at um, calibrating the remote. The first step is to open up the BLDC tool here. Once the BLDC tool, tool is open, we'll open up the board Power it up. We'll wait a few seconds and click the refresh arrow here. As you can see, it changed to VSC, which is the equivalent of the fog box. Once we connect, we can see that the VSC firmware version is read. So now we'll do the first step is doing a read configuration. And then we'll go into app configuration because the, the remote is an app configuration. We'll then do again a read configuration. Once it's done, we'll go into the PPM settings because the remote is working with PPM. And then we'll do disable and display. We're doing a disable just to make sure that once we're trying to, re to calibrate the remote, it doesn't spin the motor, the motor around. Also, I always recommend to make sure that your motor can spin free if you forget to do so you won't damage anything. So the first step after is to open up the remote. As we can see, it's now connect with the board. So the next step we'll do, we'll just go full throttle and we'll take a note of the value. Now the value is 1.91. So we'll go into the maximum pulse width and into maximum pulse width, we'll just write the value down uh, 1.91. 1. We'll do the same with the brake and then we'll go full brake, take a note of the value which is 1.13 and into minimum pulse width we'll just go and write down 1.13. After this we'll go right configuration and then we'll look at the display bar. Once we are in neutral position it should, uh, it should be around 50%. If we go full throttle, it should go up to 100%. And if we go full brake, it should go back to zero. And once we remove, neutral position should go back at 50%. So once everything is done, we'll make sure to write again. Put back to current, no reverse with brake. This one is really important. And we'll go right. And if everything is can move around we'll just go and throttle a bit just to see if the motors are moving before closing back the enclosure there we go so now we can just for safety just close the remote close the board and we'll be ready to close up the board because this is over once everything is tested we need to put back the enclosure to do so we'll doing the same technique as before we'll go 90 degrees up and flip the enclosure back and just make sure to align every hole like this and then we'll be ready to put the screw back. To put the screw back I highly suggest to start from the front of the deck and make our way back and just don't tie them at first we'll do a second round and tie them after. So we'll start and I highly suggest and really recommend to use Loctite on each screw right now we're putting the new one we do use some permatex blue which is a loctite that is coming like a jelly which is which is pretty much easier to use and don't make a mess so we'll start from the bottom from the top and make our weight down <laughs> <laughs> 